And now that we have information coming into COPS, we need to set up our texturing workflow over here. One of the things that we need to recognize when we're bringing in masks uh, into COPS, whether they're height or mask or a custom name mask, so that they're coming in with only one channel. Uh, so in, you can see the red channel is full here, the green, the blue, and the alpha are empty, right? When we start layering these up together, then we can run into uh, odd scenarios where you can have uh, an image from disk, for example, which has three channels in it, and a mask which only has one channel, and COPS doesn't really know what to do. The best thing to do is to take our one channel and ensure that it is three channels. Now, there's a few different ways to do this. Uh, you can do it in a VOP cop if you want. You can do it with a channel copy, and I have some videos on that. Uh, another way to do it is to use just a color node. So I'm going to put down a color node here, and maybe we'll put down a null just in between. So I'm going to take the information and I'm going to plug it into the mask of the color, right? So the color is going to generate the channels for me, the red, green, and blue channel. And I'm going to tell it which mask I want to use. So I'm going to say, yeah, use the uh, the mask that we've just painted. That's fine. To ensure that it is the, the color node is the correct size, an easy thing to do is just drag the wire into the first input. And then you can cut the wire again. And that will ensure that it is the correct size. Now I'm getting the same information as before, but I'm getting it in the red, green, blue channel and in the alpha channel. That'll ensure that I don't get any funky stuff happening when I'm compositing different textures together later on. So I'm going to take this color straight back out and put it on our pig. So I'll put down a null here, which I will call, so I'll call RGP for color. Let's put down a quick material over here. And I'm going to just put down a null as well and say this is our geo. And in our quick material, I can take my RGB and I can drop it in here, put OP in front, colon, hit enter, and we should be able to see that our pig has some color going on. Now we're running into an alpha issue, and that's because we generated an alpha with our color node. So let's go and delete the alpha here down the bottom. And we just get rid of the alpha. And you can see it doesn't update automatically in the viewport over here. Now this is an issue we ran into in the last lesson. If I move the viewport around, you will see that it updates. Now that gets a little bit annoying because if I come in here and I start changing the color, for example, I've got to go and move the viewport. So a little bit of a hacky way around that is to do the following. Uh, I started to notice that the COP network itself is actually generating a mesh here and the mesh is getting updated each time. So if we put down a merge node, we can hook up the COP to one side and we can hook up our quick material to the other. And if we put our viewer down here, so we do need to ensure the export flag is on the node that we want to show. So this is a little bit like using chops if you've done that. So we need to ensure the export flag is down here, uh, which is the brown one. And now if I update the color, it will update in the viewport automatically. That's quite handy now, so I can jump around here and I can try out my different colors, no problem at all. Now, at the moment, it's not visually very interesting, and that's because we're using the mask that we painted, and the mask that we painted was a bit rough-handed. So maybe if I come back here and I change it over to using height, we can see that we're not getting much range here. So in the case of height, if we want to use that one, what we need to do is we need to equalize the height. Now, the reason that we need to do this is normally within terrains, the height could be very, very large. So it's not used to very small values like what we have at the moment. We could potentially use a remap here to do something similar to an equalize in COPS. But if I put this in here, now I'm grabbing more of the rain. This is more of the height values and you can see the little bit of grouting that we had previously. I'd like to try and take some of this information and bring it over into the normals channel. Now, in the previous lesson that I had, we were doing that using a HDA. Uh, in the meantime, I have figured out a different way to do it within COPS, which seems to be pretty speedy. I'll grab all of these nodes here and I'll just hold the alt key to duplicate the whole lot. And we'll use the height again, that's fine. We'll equalize it out. But somewhere here, I want to try and turn it from height information into normal information. So we can put down a gradient cop and let's set our visualizer to that. And that's definitely bringing through some information for us. It's just in the wrong color space. So I'm gonna move the gradient type over to displacement, and I'm going to change the output from UV gradient to normal map. 
and that is getting me some normal information coming through based on the height map. Now I can check, I can play around with the scale here if I want to make it a little bit stronger. So I'm going to put this up to four for the moment, and I'm going to rename this null to NML for normal. So let's put this into our quick material normal slot, and I'll put an OP at the start here. And now we've got some normals coming through as well. Let's set up something similar for our displacement. Again, so I'll take the height, the equalize is fine. We can get rid of the normal here. Uh, I will probably want a levels for my displacement, so we can drop that in here. I will probably want to blur my displacement just a little bit, so we'll put a blur in just here. We can rename this to DSP. Now, while I primarily want my displacement for over in Karma, uh, I'd like to be able to test it out at least a little bit in my OpenGL viewport. And if I take a look on the quick material, I'll see that there isn't actually a slot for displacement, at least not by default. So how do I go and get OpenGL displacement? Well, what I need to do is I need to switch to the original material. If I come back and check it again, now I have enabled texture displacement down the bottom. Now, for you guys, it might pop up a little warning thing saying it's going to switch. Just click OK. I'm going to put the displacement value in here just to test this one out. OP colon in front of it, enable texture displacement, and I'm definitely getting some. So let's lower the value down to 0.001. No, a little bit too low. Let's try dialing it up just a little bit. And yeah, we're definitely getting some displacement coming through. So our displacement is looking pretty chunky. Uh, if I turn on my lights, we might be able to see it just here. You can see it's looking pretty triangulated. Partly that's because we don't have enough uh, polygons and partly it's because we don't have, have subdivision turned on for our viewport. Uh, so I'll try turning on subdivision for my viewport first. Uh, so if I hit shift and plus over the viewer, now it takes a second to go and cache the whole thing, but sub the viewport subdivision is turned on now. You should see it pop up. Look, turn off viewport subdivision and turn it on. Again, it takes a second to go through. We end up with a smoother result and we can start dialing up from here. So that does end up with more of a smooth result overall. Uh, keep in mind the mass that we've painted is, is still pretty chunky at the moment. Uh, we could also go and add a subdivide just before the quick material. So, th so that should be our texturing setup basically done. Let's go back and test it out. So I'm gonna go back over to my texture mass paint over here and I'm gonna clear the whole thing. I'm just gonna come in and paint a stripe down the center of the pig head. Then when I come down to my height field mask here, I should see, yeah, over here I'm getting some noise. So let's play around with the values here. Let's make it a little bit smaller, about five here. Now you can see that we're not getting an enormous amount of detail uh, right at the moment. And that's because our texture mask paint was set to 512. So I'm gonna change this up to 1K. This is just going to upscale from the 512 so it will give us more blurry edges, but it will give us more detail overall. And I'll come down to my height field noise here, and I'm gonna up the element size a little bit to about 10. So I just get these kind of uh, grouting marks that are, are running through the, the texture. Let's go and see what that looks like. Uh, so we can come in here and we can check our SOP import. And again, we can see that the mask has come through, so that's fine. And the height doesn't appear to have much information in there. Now we can come back down here and check our color and we see we run into this issue where the color is still evaluating at 512 by 512 so that has not updated uh, now we have two choices here we can turn this guy off and that will probably update yeah so that's gone back to 1024 by 1024 or your other option if i was to take a look like this guy is still the wrong size is you can quickly do this you can drag a wire down uh, to the first input and then just cut the wire and it will take the size of whatever the input was. So you'll see that this guy here now is 1024 by 1024. So we'll just keep an eye on that as we're going down through it to make sure we're getting the most amount of resolution. Uh, just in terms of the color here, uh, the color, yeah, so we're getting some kind of colored details going through there. And you'll see the same thing happening for our normal map just here and for our displacement just over here. Now with the displacement, generally speaking, we want it to be uh, black and white anyway. So the node we need to use there is called mono. After the delete, we can put it in and that will make it go black and white here and then we can blur it off. Yeah, so there's our displacement coming through. Let's go back over and take a look at our quick material on our pig then. Uh, so we've got something coming through here. Uh, we only have the displacement hooked up on the 
new quick material with the displacement slots. Uh, so let's go and add our normal map here. And we can put OP in front. So that's the normal map coming through. And we can go and add this guy for our base color. And that's the base color coming through. Ah, uh, let's dial up the metal list a little bit. Now that's going to kill off the base color a little bit. But you can see we are starting to get that detail coming through in the mask that we've painted. So our setup is starting to come together a little bit. Let's go and test it out live and see how we go. So I'm going to hide the uh, thumbnails here and I'm going to hide the cops because I found this makes it go faster. I'll leave the visibility on my quick material, but I can select my texture mask paint here and I can start painting. Now, we need to make a decision about seeing the geometry or not. We're seeing the geometry come through there. We can turn that off if you like. We can turn it off here. And now we can come through and we can start painting and we're getting the normal and we're getting the displacement coming through. The system overall is basically working. Uh, you do need to keep in mind when you turn off the geometry here, if you go back and look at the texture mass paint node, the pig has disappeared. Now it's still there, you can see your viewer moving over it and that's because you told us that you didn't want to look at the geometry. So you need to remember to turn that back on again.